Welcome to the Student Pilot Podcast. My name is Simon Callis, a flight school owner. Each week, myself and my guests will be talking all things flight training and beyond to help inspire, motivate and support you on your journey to becoming a private or commercial pilot. Welcome to the podcast today. We've got a special guest all the way from Coronation Street. We've got Sam Retford. Welcome, Sam. Hello. Thank um, you very much for having me. Yeah, no worries, mate. Good to have you on board. So um, Sam recently completed his LAPL with us. Um, now, one of the main objections I get, Sam, when I'm talking to people about learning to fly is, is obviously money is a big one, but one of the big ones is I don't have the time. Now, in a lot of cases, I think that isn't true. You know, if you look at what people are actually doing, they probably could make the time. Um, so in your case, you're probably the busiest person I know. <laughs> so you're a busy actor. You've got your own media company. Um, you've got uh, sponsors you're doing with Royal Enfield. You've got many, many hobbies, including diving and, and uh, caving as well. Um, so how did you find the time to do it, Sam? How did I find the time to do it? Um well, I suppose it's just about getting, if, if your priorities are leaning towards that of adventure and um, seeing the world, you know, if you're as, as fortunate as I am to be able to be flexible in those senses, you know, the yeah. job that I have is very intense for short bursts of time. Yeah. And then outside of that, you've got egregious amounts of time where you can yeah. sort of play with and choose. And, and I choose to just sort of be poor, but see the world. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> and, uh, and, and it takes me to these beautiful, amazing places. Yeah. Um, and one of those things is, one of those places is Coventry. And <laughs> Alba. And sunny Coventry. It's sunny Coventry. <laughs> 10% of the time. Uh, yeah, that much. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so I think, I think a lot of you just hit the nail on the head is what are you prioritising over your flying? So for some people, it might be... Um, you know, for, I, I tell you what, there's, uh, this is not to do with time, but it's to do with finances. So I had a guy come in recently and he said, look, I haven't got much money to learn to fly, but I'm driving this nice Audi and that's going, you know, and I'm like, really? That's, you know, that's a commitment. And he did. I thought he's full of, you know, it won't have happened, but he did. He sold the Audi, made the money to do it. So I think the same is true with time. You know, if you prioritise it higher, you will find the time. Absolutely. And I think if you look at how much screen time you spend on your phone for a start, you know, that's hours a day for most people. What could you be doing with that time? You could be reading a book, learning about flying. Completely agree. So let's take it back right to the start with you. So um, so you did LAPL. Um, can you tell us how you got involved with this here at Alma and, and how you um, first envisaged you might start learning to fly and why? Yeah, um, I mean, I, I was super fortunate. I, I grew up um, in, in the sticks in Australia, so I, I'd always sort of been around nature and adventure. And so I'd always had that real lust for life and seeing the world and um and, you know, a lot of that came from, uh, you know, my mum was amazing at, at, at showing me the world when we, when we were growing up and, yeah. and very fortunately managed to fit that. And, you know, being a single parent and yet she still managed to, like, get us to, to see a lot of the world. And, and so I was you know, super fortunate enough to be flying from a very young age and, um, and also to be seeing, uh, seeing people flying planes. I've got this brilliant little image of me... Um, a little print out in, in a photo book in Australia in this Buzz Lightyear outfit oh. in the cockpit of a Cessna, <laughs> um, you know, with the green cans yeah, on. Yeah, and yeah. I was like, well, there you go, you know, destined to yeah. sort of, to reach the skies. And so, um, so yeah, you know, my mum's my passion for sort of um, facilitating me seeing the world led when I was 18 to her um, helping me to, uh, to go and do a diving internship so I went out and started seeing you know what was under the earth and, yeah, and that yeah. was you know I grew a huge fascination and love for that and now that's a real integral part of my life and then for my 21st I remember we, we were sat in the kitchen and Jen she handed me this envelope and uh, and I opened it and she got me flying lessons I really I didn't understand it at first I didn't yeah. understand what it was and, and yeah I was sort of reading into it and, and I'm like, oh, this is huge. This is life changing. This yeah, is yeah. mega. Yeah. Um, and, it, and it was a massive commitment. And I just thought, no, this is it. This is, this is great. And she was, you know, joking with that. I remember she saying, she, she said, you know, you're going to have to take a week off. I can't tell you what it is, but you're going to have to take this yeah. week off. And I was like, oh God, what, what's she bloody sending me off? <laughs> you know, and, See, I, I remember talking to her about it, obviously, before you knew. 
and uh, it was quite a feat to organise it because I said, right, you really need some time to get. Yeah, Has he got yeah. the time? And she's like, don't worry about that. We're going to sort this out, you know. And it was, it was amazing. And so there was sort of the serendipity then with the. I, rem- I remember the first lockdown and, and working within television and film. We were allowed to carry on through all of the lockdowns yeah. apart from the first one. And yeah. I remember it coinciding with being, I think, in the last three years, my only actual week off. Yeah. And I thought, well, this is brilliant. And, yeah. uh, and that was it. And that started this journey of. Um, of, of learning to fly, really. So that started um, on, on the ground school, wasn't it, um, initially? That was over Zoom, yeah. My yeah. first introduction to flying was through a computer, which was so that, Yeah, I mean, that's the first time we did that. Because obviously we had to um, pivot, if you like. It was like, how are we going to carry on running these courses? And a lot of the people that signed up on the first round of Fast Track were in lockdown. So there was a group of you all on Zoom at the same time. Yeah. And in fact, I remember, I think it was... You were on your birthday, weren't you? On the Zoom, weren't you? I remember, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. you were on your actual birthday on the Zoom. Um, so yeah, it started off like that and we had to adapt. How did you find that doing the course on Zoom, the, the theory? I actually really enjoyed it because I, I could be in my own home and I could have all of my kit there. I could have them, I could be as messy as I wanted. I had the map out on the floor. I had notes sticking everywhere. <laughs> um, and you could, the great thing about it was that you could follow on as you went. So if there was yeah. a section coming up that I, I sort of relatively knew a little bit about, I could stay yeah. over scanning my notes of of what had just come. And there were, um, and there were times and you could break off and, and go and really disconnect from it. Yeah. And, and they, you guys really prioritized at breaking it down into manageable segments of yeah. going, okay, we're going to go through this and then take five minutes, go and grab a cup of tea. You guys yeah. love cup of teas and, and, and that was fun. It's an aviation <laughs> it's thing. It's an aviation <laughs> thing and you guys are like, right, take five, yeah. we're going to yeah. go off and grab a cuppa. So I was just there, you know. Um, it's not for you guys, it's for us. No, no, yeah, 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 that's what I thought. I mean, come on, Steve didn't even leave his chair the whole time. Oh, no. you know, bring, this, this arm just bringing him in teas from the side of camera. Um, but no, yeah, and I loved it. It was, um, I really really love everything and that was that was a huge bit uh, an aspect that I loved I love every anything that um that you go into of like brain expansion I think yeah. we're so limited yeah, nowadays yeah. and taught that we have to learn one thing yeah. and then we have to carry on with that discipline yeah. whereas I've uh, t- probably to some detriment just gone no we can live a thousand lives at the same yeah. time and learn this if you can if you can cram it in there yeah. then then roll with it and so all of this stuff was I was just sort of taking with open arms and and you know filling pages and pages of notes I was I was rubbish in school so so this was an opportunity for me to to choose to yeah. do it to choose yeah, to yeah. make that commitment because I wasn't being forced to do it yeah, and, exactly, and the yeah. difference there when I was choosing to be in that seat was uh, was was brilliant and and I really enjoyed the the different processes because you guys approached it from an analytical level from you know from more of a talking point of view and then like a diagraphical level like drawing everything out and uh, and then a kinesthetic level you know of the uh, using the models yeah, yeah and so there was three different ways to learn the same subject and then I could go on after that and go right what worked for me and that that teaching method that versatility yeah. became very prevalent throughout. Yeah, I mean, it actually led us to um, record those ground schools. Not not the live ones that you guys went on, but we actually recorded it because people were asking for videos. And so now we do it, you know. And, and actually, I think it's easier than, you know, you have to read the books anyway, but it sinks in. You've got to have different ways of making it sink in, haven't you? I remember so, that, that coming up later on in my training, which obviously we'll get to, but for... for you know reasons um I had delayed a few of my exams but it got to the point where I was like I was at the peak of my knowledge after mm. that week because we we drilled it in for a week yeah. and you know whatever was the next day we could cover and, yeah. and go back on so uh, when you guys released those videos that was hugely helpful for me because to be able to have that and then you know rewind five minutes and see it and listen to it again uh, was hugely beneficial comparatively to reading it through in a book yeah i think so but what what we have decided to do on the on the back of that is that is to break them down into smaller segments because people kind of pause it and go back to it but i think if you do it like step by step by step it's easier absolutely 100 you know? so, so you started on the fast track now one of the benefits to the fast track was that you were kind of contracted to four hours a week training over two days so there was a a real element of intensity about it and also one of the real big benefits I think is the fact that we plan it all out for you so you literally just turn up you don't have to do any bookings any of that stuff it's all planned for you even down to when you do your exams and all that kind of stuff um tell us how how you found that what the benefits that were to you 
I really enjoyed that being taken out of your hands and everything mm -hmm. because the motivation then came from came out of necessity yeah um and and it was all plugged out for you and you mm -hmm. didn't have to forward think yeah. um and you could focus on what was there that day yeah. once that was then completed you were only a minimum of six days away from the the next yeah. one you know the following week and what it also meant was that you could follow on from skills in a really observable narrative arc. So, mm -hmm. you know, you could say I'd, I'd come in and have a session on um, general handling or whatever with uh, with Carmen. And then the following day, it would be very easy to link the skills yeah. that I'd learned from the previous day into yeah. the next day. Uh, similarly, leaving that essence of time. There's been a lot of research into into gapping and yeah. leaving those those mental gaps for stuff to sink in. Yeah. And the difference between you being able to retain information and take five minutes off, let that information sink in, your brain replays it over and over yeah. again. So if you then go away that night, your brain's just buzzing in the background. Um, you know, taking in, retaining all of that information, making it autonomical in a yeah. sense, so that when you come back the next day, you can get rid of that information that can stay stored then and you're on to yeah. the next subject. Yeah. Whereas if you leave that time to elapse over a large period of time, you can find yourself having to reformat those neuro pathways and, mm -hmm. and go back over the same skills again. Instantly yeah. you've lost that very valuable hour within a four hour segment. Yeah, absolutely. Um, I mean, that's one of the biggest things I found because you know my story, I did it over years starting and stopping and it was just, you felt like sometimes you were, you know, in, especially in the early stages, I think the early stages of the first solo is probably the most important to be intensive. And um, I found that there were times where I would literally go back and think, I'm spending half a lesson just recapping on last time. And it's it's so easily done. Um, one of the other things which we, um, obviously in your case, because you were traveling from Manchester way, um, so people are always um, kind of, you know, looking for a school immediately next door to them kind of thing. And I think it's more about a school that's going to give you what you need and you get on with um, than actually their locality. Because, I mean, you travelled every week from Manchester. You were staying in B&Bs. Um, there's a funny story we'll talk about later on also about you travelling. Um, so do you think, if from your perspective, it was important to be at the right school or just a school? Well, I think I think having uh, been um, uh, my family are from Coventry as well, so mm -hmm. that that was that was a nice I didn't know that. pull. Yeah, 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 <laughs> yeah. yeah, I yeah. Know they, that. You know, uh, on the drive in, I literally yeah. drive past my my great grandma's house, oh, well. <laughs> uh, where we spent a lot of time growing up. Yeah. So, um, so that was that was really really nice. Um, yeah, I th I think it's it's always about um, choosing someone that, that's right for you. You know, if mm -hmm. it, let's say I had of saved on the two hour commute and gone somewhere local but it wasn't necessarily as flexible or as right for me then you're going to be wasting that time anyway on yeah. further developing your training on, on dragging out that training whereas if you find somewhere that's really efficient for you mm -hmm. you know that transport's worth it and uh, you know you turn those commutes into lessons you know as I was driving down here I was putting on uh, podcasts and yeah. stuff about flying yeah. I, I was you know sat there on the M6 sort of yeah. running through drills yeah. as we were going and you know yeah, 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 <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah absolutely you know you yeah. were there and a hundred percent and I massively recommend that just I was doing it on the way here today just yeah. uh, having you know been off for a, a month I was like oh I was just run through some drills and you drive in the car yeah. like you fly a plane you know I still do traffic. that yeah right? I still do it and it's really really helpful and people underestimate the power of it you absolutely. know I said to a student the other day he's like I'm really struggling with like the downwind checks and I'm like well sit in your armchair at home and talk through it like you're doing it and he's like, that's a bit mad. I was like, who cares what anybody else thinks? Just do it. You'd have to tell them what you're doing. You <laughs> Until know? you start slamming the alien on with your left leg and spinning around <laughs> yeah, the other Yeah, sense. exactly. But no, so, but, I, so I, I, never, I, I never minded the commute. And then, um, you know, through, uh, I work a lot with Royal Enfield mm -hmm. and through, you know, having their bikes and stuff, we, I, it would turn the commute down here into a little micro adventure. So yeah. I'd get up five o'clock in the morning and I'd go, right, you know, yeah. I'd take a day off and, and say, right, this, this is an adventure now so I'd take all the side streets and come down and chill with you guys and, yeah. and that's a beautiful aspect of it is the social aspect as yeah. well it's yeah. not it's not a school for, for coming down and and, and hunkering down and and, and uh, having teachers sort of wrap your knuckles with a meter stick it's yeah. it's coming down and having a laugh with some yeah. mates and and you're learning at the same time and it's really 
proactive atmosphere when you choose to to yeah. view it like that and that was when my mind shifted as well if i had days where i was like oh bloody hell this is hard work now i, I you know i'm struggling to retain this information i'm not progressing as fast as i want to switch that mindset and go yeah. right no this is an adventure what privilege this is for me yeah. to come down and i'm i'm gonna go fly an airplane today yeah. this is insane i jump on the bike and i'd full throttle it down and we we jump in a plane and we go flying for the day and that's yeah. that, when you make it a choice to be there and, exactly and, and a choice for the yeah. adventure and that is funny you say about a choice because one thing i noticed recently is we do have certain people who i think perhaps the the reason why they're here is because of their parents, not them. Like, as in, like it was perhaps the, they're fulfilling what their parents wanted to do, and you can see that in the student. It's not they're happy to be doing it, but they're not like you are passionate about it. They're just they're just doing it. Do you see what I mean? And I think there's a difference in motivation. If you've got the motivation because you want it, you're going to get through it. Absolutely. If you're yeah. not, if you're not passively, if you're passively engaging with all of that yeah. material, a you're not, you're not going to progress as quickly because you're not going to yeah. retain all of that information. Yeah. But if you've got that really strong dopaminergic driving factor to this is something you want to do, yeah, yeah. your whole function is going to be differently geared yeah. towards it. And I think, um, so I'm just going to check that still, uh, I get paranoid about the recording. <laughs> um, I think the, the other thing is like fixating on the end goal. You know, you you were always like, yeah, well, when I do this, we're going to go here, we're going to do this, do that. And that is, that is the thing, that's the driving force. And I think if you, and that's another reason why I think people struggle at learning at your own pace if they take too long, because the end goal is so far away that they lose sight of it. Well, that, that's where I would recommend the opposite. That's where I would say, you know, the man who loves to run mm. will run further than the man who loves to finish a race and win yeah, a race. Yeah. So yeah, if yeah. you find the joy and passion within yeah. the learning process, yeah. then you're going to enjoy it so much more than going, yeah. all I want to do is pass the test. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, yeah. I, I'd get to the point where I wasn't fussed whether I passed the test. I was flying yeah. whether or, or not I was going to get there. You yeah. know, I knew that would come eventually. But yeah. if you find the joy in learning, then it, the process becomes a lot easier. I think that's probably part of my... I think I was so fixated on the joy of flying, not actually getting the licence. <laughs> if I'm being brutally honest, it was... I don't think my reason why we're strong enough, I just liked it. Well, we, yeah. do, we do it all of the it's, time. Uh, we, we do it in everything. We're, we're hardwired to, to do it from schooling, to go, yeah. right, now you're doing this so you can pass the exams. Yeah. But you should be doing it to learn because you yeah. want to expand your brain and because and you want to see all of these things. And, you know, if, if, if I had a magic button and, and you wanted to just skip to the end and give you a licence, well, then you wouldn't know how to fly. <clears throat> yeah, exactly. So all of these things are so key um to to the to the entire process and if you do like i say enjoy that learning process then you'll get there so much quicker yeah. in your head and yeah. you'll enjoy that journey a lot more i think the the main benefit for doing it intensively really is the the lack of skill fade is one of them which we've touched on um but i think like i say if you let it go too long then you can unless you're really strong-willed you can lose sight of why you're actually doing it and give up you know so i definitely struggled with that i definitely yeah. had ebbs and flows of yeah. uh, when we got into you know it, because of various reasons it ended up very far down the line where i was like oh, i've been i've been plodding at this for a yeah. while now you know how how can we stay motivated and that was when i yeah. made the shift to no let's enjoy the process of it so it was very yeah. mindful it was yeah so yeah i mean you were one of several that started in covid who had the same problems and in actual fact some were very similar in that um, we spoke to billy recently she got deployed with the military you, you had filming jobs to go and do and both of you had breaks of around six months you know and for you to come back and actually get through the course and finish it i think is a you know, it's a, a thing in itself, you know, because some people would have given up, you know, and I see that quite a lot, you know, so, so well done for sticking at it, you know. Thank you very much. Um, uh, it's, no, it's, it's uh, by far one of the, I, I think, top proudest moments I've ever been in myself was yeah, to, to sort of plod through this and, and get to the end. It's, and I, for us here as a school, I actually prefer seeing the people who've, it's, it's nice to see people progress really quickly and get to the end, um, but... The people who have had the hardest journey when they pass, it's like the biggest fulfillment for us because you see, like yourselves, Billy, um, Mel, those kind of people who have had a bit of a struggle through no reason of their own. You know, they haven't struggled with the course, it's just the commitments, you know. Um, to see them get that license they thought might not happen, it's just amazing. I think you know? I'm such a, um, 
personal perfectionist yeah. that I saw loads of progress in the start. And, you yeah, know, yeah. I, I, I was so uh, unnecessarily hard on myself to yeah. want to pass in, in a day. And like, nah, come on, I can, I can do this. I'm, I'm, yeah. I'm a star student here. We're, we're, we're yeah. tracing through. Yeah. So when the delays happened, yeah. I became immeasurably frustrated with yeah, myself. Yeah. Yep. Um, but that then I, I found was clouding my training. And so I had to release that and go, no, listen, let's take it slowly and yeah. let's enjoy the learning process and, and go step by step and know yeah. that you're not going to be the first one to pass this because yeah. you can't, you physically can't do it. And you'd be rushing that learning process when yeah. actually, if yeah. you think about it, there's a real safety aspect behind rushing yourself through that course. There is, there is, and there isn't. This is an interesting point, actually. I'm glad we picked up on this because... For me, flight safety is two things: it's currency, and then um, so and recency, which is similar. Okay, mm. so what you tend to find is people, you know, their abilities are very much dependent on when, how frequently they fly, if you like, mm. and how recent it was. So, I find that, and I'll give you a typical example of this. This is why when you get a student who passes, they tend to be unless they're going on to commercial level, for example. They tend to pass, and what happens is then they will their frequency of their flying will drop, their confidence drops, their ability drops, okay, because they're not flying with instructors anymore. <clears throat> and what you can find is that's when they start to get a little bit dangerous because they're not quite current, they're not quite recent, which is why we have this 28-day rule. So in terms of safety and training, I do think it's safer to be more intensive than it is not because usually the most experienced pilot in the room is the one with the most hours and who's the most recent. You know, um, so you can get pilots who have got like 2000 hours, but they haven't flown in 10 years. They're not going to be that safe. You know, yeah. they're going to have to fly with somebody. So I think it's a balance. In yeah. that is what I'm saying. Yeah, so I think so. You, you can overwork people, which is bad. So you can fly too frequently and it's not going in and they're getting tired, fatigue. That's a problem. And that's why we only allow people to fly up to two hours per day. I was going to say, um, I think that was something I really realized that, um, that that I didn't take into account at the start is how tiring it is yeah. and how yeah. I'd come off a two hour day. Yeah. And that's not, not much at all. You know, yeah, you think, yeah, you think yeah. these, these guys yeah. who are doing it, yeah. you know, eight hour flights. I come off two hours, I would be shattered. Yeah. And then I'd be like, oh my goodness. And then we'd sit down and try and, and, and put some more information in. And yeah. I said, like, I'm not going to retain this information. Yeah. This is, I, I need to go to bed. And, and yeah. I do remember self-preservation was a big thing that, Absolutely. that Steve taught of like, yeah. you know, get, um, get a good night's sleep. Yeah. Get some good breakfast in you. Don't come in tired and groggy yeah. and not even coming. Because it's, it's a real difficult thing to retain all that information Absolutely. in such short periods of time. So I really found that benefit in... in uh, modulating the amount that yeah. I was taking in, but also the amount that I was having rest off in between sessions. Yeah. I mean, it's interesting because um, when we went to Carnarfon recently, Billy was like, oh yeah, well, we'll go to Carnarfon this day. Then we'll go on another long trip on the, on the, on the Monday. And I'm like, what, two long trips, two days? And she's like, yeah, yeah. I was like, well, I'm up for it, but I don't think you will be, you know? And she's like, yeah, no, it'd be fine, it'd be fine. Anyway. Look as it happened, the following day, one of the aircraft I had to take to maintenance to Wellsbourne, so it was only ever going to be a really short hop, but I says, we'll be stuck there all day. Anyway, she come in on, on the following day, like looking, you know, a bit worse for wear, and I says, oh, are you tired? And she's like, yeah, I didn't even do anything. She's like, How? and she goes, I'm so glad we're not doing two long trips over two days. I'm like, well, I did say, you know, yeah. you, you don't realise. You just yeah, don't realise. you've really so, got to look after yourself with it, yeah. 100%. In fact, there was a trip I did that was um, five hours 20, I think it was. And we, as it happened, we had to divert into Oxford because of the weather. And the next day, I had to go and pick up the aeroplane. I was thinking, I really do want to go and pick up this aeroplane. So I'm just knackered. I can't be asked, but I had to. So it's like, you know, you just take it out of you. Yeah. Yeah, there's, a, there's definitely a stamina with it that I'd recommend for the, especially for the test, because your skills yeah. test is, is a long one. It's a long one, yeah. So having that stamina of, of knowing what, you know, two, an hour, two yeah. hours, two and a half hours feels like yeah. is, is real key. There's so many people who say when they start a course, right, oh, you know, I'm different to everybody else. I want to do four hours a day. And I'm just like, no way. You know, it's two hours a day. That's as much. Well, yeah. you know, what if somebody else will let me do it? I'll go somewhere else. Well, you, you're welcome to because yeah. I'm going to look after your safety. And I'm looking after, you know, how much you're going to retain. So, I think that was the aspect I was yeah. touching on with the, with the rete was memory retention. Because, yeah. he, he, you know, my, my memory works is certainly from years of sort of learning scripts. I've got really active short-term memory. So yeah. everything, I, you know, I can pick up a page and, and yeah. put it down. I'd know it off by heart. 
that I'd, I wouldn't know it tomorrow, but I'd know yeah. it until about 10 p.m. tonight. Yeah. So, you know, I really need to then work that information back in so it's stick in the long term and, and become... That's, that's interesting. I'm completely the opposite. I can remember stuff from 20 years ago, like it happened five minutes ago. Oh, yeah, I die by long term. I can't remember, term. like, short yeah. term, terrible. Um, so, let's talk about then. So, you moved off the fast track scheme. We decided, obviously, that the learn at your own pace was going to be more flexible for you. So one of the um, the things I always say to people who are looking at learn at your own pace, there is no right way to learn to fly. It's one that has to fit for your needs at the time. Um, so most people who go on learn at your own pace are usually ones that have like irregular availability. Um, generally as well, sometimes people who want to fly a bit less frequently to fit their budget and that kind of stuff. But it tends to have some negative impacts if they don't manage it right. So one of them is that if you were the type of student I was, where you ring up on a Wednesday for a flight on a Saturday because you think that everyone's sat on the ground and the aeroplanes aren't being flown, then you're like, oh, okay, well, I can't fly with the instructor I wanted because they're busy already, or I can't get the aeroplane. Um, so it can cause problems if you don't plan it well. So how did you manage that aspect when you moved on to, on to that? I think because, yeah, like, like you say, we were sort of on track to, to shoot through the fast track course, but then through various reasons, I think it was COVID and I was shooting on a job out in the Caribbean. Um, we, um, we found that that, that would yeah. work much more flexibly. And personally, it, it took a lot of getting used to because it was yeah. very, again, you're changing your learning method completely. Yeah. So I'd adapted my brain to take in this really yeah. intense course training. And then I was like, all right, now, now we're not flying for four weeks at a time and yeah. coming back or six weeks. Oh, now it's six months yeah. since I've last flown. You know, I was, I was gapping sort of months at a time. In the immediacy, I would find it very frustrating because yeah. I'd come back and, you know, having left off where I was, which was quite ahead of the game, I'd be relearning things. Yeah. And I was thinking, oh, I've, you know, I've, I've come all the way down here for, for the day and, and we've spent half the day doing stuff I did last time, doing very basic stuff that, yeah. again, I was being really hard on myself and yeah. stuff I thought I should have had by now. So I certainly found that aspect of it challenging. But what it meant is I just did more homework mm -hmm. and, I, and I would come back and... and have refreshed them skills prior. Yeah. So when we got in the actual aircraft, I was ready to move on. Yeah. Um, what I, not regret, I don't really regret anything. What I found a lot more difficult with the intensive was I delayed my theory. Right. Because um, I'd lost, do you want me to hold for the phone? No, it's gone. Um, so what I did was I delayed my theory. Um, I did a lot of the exams straight off, which, mm -hmm. which I, I was happy with because I'd retained all that information. Yeah. And then I thought, and you guys had said this since day one, you know, <laughs> don't hold off on your exam. And I thought, oh, Nav, I'm not really happy with Nav yet. So I, I tuck that one <laughs> away. Everyone leaves Nav to last. Yeah, it's just not What's gonna, Nav done to you? <laughs> no, I'm not going to tell anyone about it. And so I just sort of floated on by and you're know, like, Is he, are you ready for your test, Sam? I was like, yeah, sure. Yeah. And you're like, you've got, you've got Nav to do still. I was like, oh, no. So anyways, but, but what I did find with that was um, I really enjoyed that I'd actually, by the time I went to do my nav practical i'd already uh, nav theory i'd yeah. already done nav practicals yeah so i could uh my brain it worked a lot better with my brain yeah. but it meant that i really had to study and, and it took up a lot more time yeah um so what i would always recommend with that if you're doing the learning to fly is get the theory done and out yeah. of the way a hundred percent um don't be stubborn like me and think you can do both at the same time because to be able to put that aside and go right now i'm just going to focus on flying it really takes a lot to retain all of that yeah, information absolutely. I think to compartmentalise it and sort of say, right, and, and also, I think knowing some of that theory when you're coming into your flight lessons, it kind of um, compounds what you're doing in the lesson. You know, it's, um, it's absolutely, quite important. Absolutely. So that was one of the challenges I found with it. Another, another challenge, I suppose, was that actually became a benefit was the lack of continuity in instructors. Yeah. So I, I, I started out, you know, when we were doing the intensive with Ali and Carmen, and that was great. You know, it was, um, again, the instructors got to know you. Yeah. So they picked up on your learning skills and stuff like that. But then what I found was I, you know, started learning with different instructors, obviously due to availabilities, but actually that grew into a big positive okay. because it meant that I could learn because we were recapping things. Yeah. 
it meant I learned three different ways of, of yeah. the circuit, three different ways of the handling. And, yeah. and I, suddenly I could pick and choose which one worked best for me. Okay. And the instructors were always very good at, at cl clicking into, oh, how did you learn this with the last person? Oh, yeah. I prefer to do it like this. There's no wrong way. There's yeah, just, you yeah. Know, it's different just the way it works, isn't it? Exactly. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Um, so I found that really beneficial because uh, I was able to um, tailor my learning experience. Yeah. Uh, and and sometimes I you know I have instructors well I understand that and don't understand that but then the next person would come along and be like oh yeah I get that way of yeah. teaching it you've all yeah. got funny little old, yeah, old I mean, person algorithms and, yeah, and um, anagrams and, I mean there are uh, don't get me wrong it's standardised as in we all teach a way of doing it but it doesn't it's not one size fits all yeah right you know you have to um, the instructors have to have the ability to say right okay. Sam, you're not getting it this way. So what about if I show you this way? And then, ah, I understand that. So it's exactly. not, you know, it's, there's not a right way or a wrong way. There's, a, you know, there's, it, ultimately it has to be safe. That's yeah, it, you know? uh, absolutely. So. Just three different ways to look at it. Different perspectives, isn't yeah, there? Absolutely. And, and different ways of wording things. But that is one of the, it can be a massive benefit, but it can also be a massive negative depending on what type of student you are. Yeah. So for, I would say for the majority of people, continuity in the way they're trained is the best but if it fits your style of learning there's no reason why you can't fly with different instructors um, but generally I look at it as actually a negative um, but again it depends on on the circumstance so for you because of your time availability it was literally a case of short notice right we need to fly this time so yeah. we just had to get it done yeah and I think because of the the how committed you were to the course that wasn't a problem to you whereas for somebody else who was maybe less committed or less driven that might have been an issue I think that was the other thing with it that I found challenging with the um when you don't do it in the intensive and you do it yeah. in the um learn at your own pace. in your yeah. learn at your own pace mm -hmm. you find that you're when you don't do it at the learn at your own pace, you find that you're self-motivated rather yeah. than course motivated. Yeah. So when you guys are doing it all for you, you know, yeah. you've got that in the calendar. You have yeah. to go then. Yeah. Whereas when you've got an open diary, if I've got yeah. one day off in the week, yeah. there's a little bit of your brain that just yeah. goes, I don't have to yeah. drive two hours to Coventry yeah, yeah. and go and, and, <laughs> and in the cold and fly a plane. I have to do that. Yeah, exactly. And yeah. you go, oh, is this quite nice to just you know like yeah, sit just in. chill and go on the bike exactly <laughs> yeah, yeah. Bike ride. so yeah. you find yourself you've got a, another battle which is the personal one yeah again it was it was that i found that yeah. challenging because um because yeah you didn't have you guys but but you were very um you had a good system of of being able to still have that communication yeah. Uh, where you guys would get in touch and go, okay, you know, listen, you, you've, yeah, you're you coming up on two months now. Yeah. Um, we've got some availability. And you go, oh, sorry, you know, you're right, yeah. you're right. Listen, or whilst we were down here, we'd go, right, when when we get in the next one booked in. Yeah. So I'd say with the um, learn at your own pace, it was it's always a benefit is to forward book as much Absolutely. as you can yeah. and not leave okay, uh, uh, let's leave the diary open. I'll, yeah. I'll get in touch with you when I know I'm available. If you've yeah. got a day in there, get that in there because yeah. if something comes up for you to move it, you just ring up and you guys were so flexible. Yeah. I've always been so thankful of that. If I could ring up and go, guys, something's come up, but you've got that date booked in and you'd go, right, when are we moving it to? Not Let's yeah. not cancel it, let's yeah, yeah, reschedule yeah. it. Yeah. Because then you have the driving factor of, no, I've got a booking. Yeah. I know I'm going down on that day. Well, that's, you see, one of the... One of the reasons why we did Fast Track is because in, in lockdown, actually, we went out to all of our customers and said, look, what are your problems? You know, and everyone came back with similar problems. It was mainly around time, finances, availability. Uh, a lot of it was around having the motivation to finish the course. Um, and then we said, you know, we put our head on the chopping block and said, right, what, what are we really bad at? You know, what are we really good at? What do you want us to stop doing, stop doing? All that kind of stuff. And that's how we formulated the fast track course by solving people's problems. Um, but one, one of the things we found was that it was a lot of it was just the accountability and the motivation. So like you just said, with when you're at learning at your own pace, if you're sort of a bit like, you know, and this is typical of me, this was, it's like, yeah okay, three weeks have passed and I haven't picked up the phone, made a book in, you know, then they're ringing up going, well, where are you? When, you know you're never going to finish this course unless you do, yeah, it'll be all right, it'll be all right, you know, and it just carries on and carries on and carries on. So 
I think one of the benefits to the fast track and, and why we do the contract with it is that we're saying, right, Sam, you know, we're contracting you to four hours flight training a week. This is what you signed up to. So if we need to, we can give you a little shove and say, look, come on, you know, this isn't what you signed up to. We need to get you going. But when you're on the, on the learn at your own pace, you kind of lose that element of that accountability and then it becomes your problem. And you've got to remain motivated to do it. So I think we still need to prod you a little bit and say, look, Sam, we haven't seen you in two months. Where have you been? I agree. Uh, yeah. yeah, absolutely. A hundred percent. Because it's so easy, especially because you're, uh, I was geographically removed from, yeah, when absolutely. I was, you know, I'm, when I'm up in Manchester and I'm working, yeah. you know, eight days a week, you, you suddenly go, wow, you haven't even thought about it. Yeah, yeah. Um, and it becomes a little bit of a privilege to be able to go down and, yeah. and do it. And so it's about giving yourself that time back as well and yeah. saying, now listen, if I don't go, if I miss this session, all it's going to do is delay me. All I'm going to be doing is taking a setback and I'm going to have to renew these skills. Yeah. And I think the other thing as well, which is the financial impact. So, you know, with my training, I reckon I spent double on it what I needed to, you know, because you've got two factors. So every year the cost of it's going to go up by 10, 15% with inflation anyway, and, and all the other things that go on. Um, and then you've got that lack of retention what you've learned so you're recovering and recovering adding hours onto your course because when you know one of the big things i like to talk about is the fact that it's a competency-based course so a ppl is not a 45 hour course it's a 45 hour minimum course right so when i say to people budget for 60 hours it's because i know the national average is closer to 60 it's better for me to give you that advice so that you don't you know like likewise with your lapel could you foresee that you would do a lapel in 30 hours I can't see it. No, I just can't. No, no you know. unless you have, unless you know, you're ten minutes down the road and yeah, you're and you fly away every day or something. Yeah, just, yeah. absolutely. It's um, okay. So um, let's just get back to where we were. Uh, did, so, what did you enjoy most about the training? I think, like with most things, that the thing I enjoyed most about the training was the um, expansive aspect of learning something new that that brain expansion that uh, extending possibilities at which you first thought weren't true you know to come from waking up one morning and not knowing how a plane gets off the floor and goes into the sky to being able to actually do that yourself and fly yeah. this little beautiful little Cessna this 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 motorbike with wings <laughs> and just you know with the doors oh, flapping that, open and do you know what's funny that's how my, my missus always says to me she's like oh you know I said do you want to come fly and she's like do I want to go in a 1970s moped with wings, that's what she calls it—a moped with wings. So when you said that, then it just that, it straight. That's what I've always called Sinner. Yeah, is yeah. that I get in it and I'm like, "What does this remind me of?" No, it's a vintage <laughs> motorbike and someone stuck wings on it. And, yeah, you, know, yeah. you really do think it's that just it smells and everything, yeah, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. But that was something I really loved about it was yeah. that really tangible aspect of yeah. getting in a plane and and it's like the difference. It's the immediacy of like riding a motorbike comparatively yeah. to riding a, a driving a car, right? Yeah. So you're riding a motorbike, that yeah. engine's between your legs, you know, yeah, you, yeah. you feel the vibrational yeah. changes, it's, yeah. it's active and responsive, and it's the same with these planes, you know, everything you're inputting, it's a very visual and, mm -hmm. and, and felt response to everything you're doing, and that's something I really enjoyed about it. Yeah. Um, so the ch that challenging aspect of, of learning that, and then the, uh, what that opens up afterwards, yeah. you know, the feeling now of being able to go, you know, woke up this morning and go, where, do you, where are you going to fly today? That's amazing at that, because you, you can literally be like, right, 50 minutes an hour, I'm in Wales. Yeah. Right? You know, yeah. It's like, that was you know, something that, that I found was, amazing. You know, for the past three years, we've been flying around in triangles and, yeah, yeah, and, yeah. and going round and round, and it's yeah. taken me two hours yeah, to get yeah, around. Yeah, yeah. I'm like, oh, bloody hell, it's going to take ages. <laughs> and then I'm sort of plugging this out, and I'm like, oh, hang on a minute. If we're not messing around doing all of this stuff, yeah. I can get to Wales in an hour. This yeah. is brilliant. That always blew my mind. It's like, how can we have been <laughs> same triangle for an hour? <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm sick of going to Wales, born and yeah, round yeah. and back. And yeah, exactly. Brunting Thorm. You know, we're going to, yeah. So I think it's the essence of adventure and, um, and opening up horizons. That, that's, that's it. It's a key to unlocking so many doors. Absolutely, yeah. Um, so... So that was what you most. What do you find most difficult about the training? Do you think? What did I find most difficult? 
I think the part I found most difficult was rewiring my brain because I've been told so much through school, through myself. I told myself I wasn't very good at maths. I told myself yeah. I wasn't very intelligent. I say, you know, you're just a silly actor. You go and play with cameras. It's not very difficult. But to, to learn your own intelligence was something that I really battled with at the start. And because it's, I'm very, I found myself very self-critical. But when I get into essence of self critique yeah. my learning process shuts down and I remember sitting in there and I, I can't remember who I was who I was with I think it was I think it was when I was flying with Steve and if I'd if I'd make a mistake I'd, I'd get in my own head and I'd shut down yeah. and I realized what a useless tactic that is yeah. that doesn't help you anywhere yeah. you know in diving in caving in yeah. riding in flying something bad happens you shake it off and you carry yeah. on so that was a beautiful challenging shift yeah and then the maths aspect of it, you know, I, I'd, again, like I said, written myself off as, you know, academically unintelligent. But then to be able to go, oh, hang on a minute, you know, there's only one way to get to that. There's only one right answer here. Yeah. How hard can that be? We, we, we need to find that thing if we run those numbers twice and get a different thing. It's, you know, something's going wrong with me here. So through process of elimination, I was able to, again, learn those methods through different teachers. There was different um, analogies you all had with. And, and I go, oh, that one works for me. You know, that uh, anagram works. That, mm -hmm. you know, that works for me. That way of working out um, uh, that works yeah. for me and and yeah so I'd say that was what I found the most difficult but also the most rewarding because when I got there mm -hmm. I realized that it was something that I put a lot of effort into I think I was the same because the, the maths I'm not very good at maths I can do things on spreadsheets calculators I know what I know but when you don't know what you know <laughs> and you've got this CRP one which looks like this devil machine <laughs> and I didn't I could do the calculation, but I couldn't justify the answer because I couldn't work it out any other way. So I'd look at it going, is that right? And it was only, you know, so I found that a bit difficult. And I, I was talking to Billy about this as well because she's, you know, she's um, got degrees and things. She's, you know, she's an intelligent girl, but she doesn't believe she is. And she struggled in her own head as well, I think, you know, from, from doing that. So I think everyone kind of looks at private pilots or, you know, or airline pilots, or whatever, and thinks they must be really, really clever. And okay, if you're in a professional career, you've got to go through a lot more hurdles, a lot more training. And yes, you do need some, not academia, but you know, you need to be fair. But to a, a private pilot level, it's, it's not as hard as what it looks. You know? I think, yeah, I think what <clears throat> I learned from it is you didn't need to come into it with that knowledge. Yeah. Uh, which was, you know, the antithesis of, of where I entered it, of like, oh, I'm, I'm starting from scratch here and everyone else is going to be, you know, 10 leagues above. But actually, we all started from the same point and yeah. no one knew what they were doing. Exactly. There's a base understanding of physics that really helped. And then beyond that, you, you learn everything from the book and, and you do not need to have that prior given massive IQ to come into this and learn to fly you really can do it and yeah. and and you can take that's the beauty of it you can take as much time as you need mm -hmm. because for some people met was a really difficult oh, thing yeah. met yeah. I got like that and it made yeah. so much sense to me from yeah. you know being outside I could really make that tangible link I love that yeah and that's then, probably going to help you in other areas of your life. Well, exa you know? exactly. I'd come into it with, with that, and, and I found that really, really easy to get a hang of. But like I said, Nav found that really difficult to get a hang of, but you yeah. just stick with it, and you, and you keep going with it, and you really don't need that prior intelligence to no. start this course at all, no. because you guys really do teach it from the ground up. Yeah. It's just about having the willingness to learn, isn't it? You know? Absolutely. It's, um, that is 100% it. So... Let's talk about, so the day of your test then, because I know you were quite sort of, um, I think you were a little bit anxious about your test, weren't you? Because there was quite a gap between when you actually were ready for test and when we could actually feasibly do it because of the weather and work commitments. Yeah, I think it was, I think it was four months. I think I came, yeah, yeah, yeah. I came to do this mock skills test and, and I sat down and, and it sort of dawned on me that, oh, hang on, the last, last time I flew was four months ago and I'm yeah. sat here going to do this exam. But yeah. I mean, that's, that's why we do the mock test though, is because inevitably there's going to be some level of skills that have degraded um, and it's our opportunity then to say right okay Sam we need to do a brush up on this brush up on this Absolutely. I don't think you needed that much brush up at the time actually but it gives us that opportunity because we do actually what a lot of people don't realize is we have to recommend you for tests 
So you can't actually just go, right, I've done my 45 hours or whatever, you know, I want to test because a lot of people just aren't ready. So we have to make sure that you've covered all of the angles, um, you know, from a theoretical point of view, um, from the training point of view, and you're of a, a, a suitable standard to be put forward to test. So um, I think, yeah, you're, you're, you're absolutely right. I'd viewed the mock test with a lot more gravitas than, yeah. than I needed to when actually yeah. it's literally there to help you and it is yeah. there to showcase those skills. I remember going up with uh, with Tom and, and he we came down and all it did was give a really nice um, flashlight onto yeah. all of the areas that we were yeah. like, right, you haven't done general handling. Uh, you haven't yeah. done the, uh, you haven't done general handling in two years. Yeah, we yeah. haven't got, we haven't gone yeah. over that. Let's just go back and get, you know, yeah. get go back to basics and yeah. and flesh it out so that you have the confidence to talk yeah. it through. Yeah, it might be in the back of your head, yeah. and that was all it all it was 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 to point out all of those areas. Brilliant. Let's do a couple of sessions on refreshing, yeah. and then and then you're there. Then you, you're up to speed because we know where you are with all the other areas. Yeah. I think the main thing is just enjoy the journey, isn't it? And I know um, you were so good at the, the outset on the fast track that I honestly think you'd have been done in a few months. Um, however, you know, life is it deals with different cards, uh, things went on, and you know, it ended up taking you a couple of years or so to do it. Um, but I think you know you enjoyed that journey. And that was the key to it, wasn't it? It's was just keeping motivated to get through it. Absolutely. That, I think that's the key to everything, is, yeah. is to enjoy the process. Yeah. And when you can be mindful in the process and enjoying what you're doing in that current moment, then there, there is no end goal for, for timings. And, yeah. and you, you put so much less restriction on, mm -hmm. on what you're doing. So, um, tell it, there's a funny story about the day of your skills test as well, revolving so, around <laughs> travelling. <laughs> there was a, yeah, there was a, so the, the first time we, we had the, uh, we had the test, I remember I'd come down and we did, it was two days, so we'd come down and the Wednesday we were sort of doing this refresher, mm -hmm. and then the Thursday, early morning, we were in for sort of 8.30 for the yeah. actual skills test, so I thought... I sort of finished that and I, I didn't want to be knackered waking up yeah. at it was sort of 4am. I'd come down on the motorbike and, you know, I, I didn't want to come down from Manchester the next day. So I thought, I tell you what, I'll, I'll sling the bike, I'll, I'll, I'll camp in the woods. <laughs> so we'd, we'd driven down, I'd, I'd ridden down and, um, and we'd sort of done the skills. I was like, right, I'm, re I'm ready for this, this test tomorrow. And so I'd gone out and um, I'd found this little woods nearby and, and I sort of pulled the bike off road and, and I was waited to make sure there was no other cars and then just sort of dipped off into the woods and, and, and you know, pitched the tarp up and all of this kind of stuff. And I'm sat there reading through in the middle of the woods, reading through my flying manual, I'm like ready for my test tomorrow. Was there not a B&B though? Like, yeah, there's there? no B&Bs now, all the B&Bs are closed. I thought, listen, sense of adventure. So I, no, I, that's I, pretty cool. So I kicked it off road and... Um, yeah, I'm, I'm going to get a good night's sleep, right? So yeah. I tuck out about 10 o'clock and the fire's still sort of bubbling away and, and I see in the distance these car lights sort of come close by. Oh, shit, it sort of wakes me up. <laughs> um, and um, I see, the, yeah, see these car lights in the distance. So I thought, oh no, what's this? And this, um, the door closes. Right. And so I turn my headlight off. And yeah. I sort of hide down. I threw some mud on the fire, <laughs> like, you know, to, to, threw some, some dirt on the fire, put, put the fire out. And I hear this this woman. Hello. Shouts this woman's voice. I was like, so I stay silent. I'm right. like, there's no way she knows I'm here. So I'm like, yeah, yeah. I, I had this big Bowie knife with me, and I, right. I, I, I put it out of its sheath. Right, I've got this <laughs> massive knife behind my back, this four inch blade, and I'm like, oh, no. I'm gonna die. I'm gonna die. I remember oh, I got my phone out and I right. rang my mate right. and just put it on silent next to me. I said, "Mate, there's there's someone here. Uh, I'm in the woods. I'm in Coventry. I just need to let them know <laughs> if I die." And, she, and, and then this voice goes, "I know you're out there. I've got a dog." And I'm like, you, you, what? You "What, love?" And she goes, "I've got a dog." And what time is it? I was like, "This is about two o'clock in the morning." Yeah. Like, I've got a dog and I can't control him. I was like, "Jesus Christ." I'm going to die. I'm going to, I'm going to sit. This dog's going to rip me to shreds. And I sort of said, peeped up from yeah. a broken voice. was like, I love. <laughs> she was like, what are you doing? I was like, I'm, I'm, I'm just, I'm having a kip. I'm, I'm sleeping in the woods. I've got nowhere else to go. And, um, and she get, and, and they go silent. Right. Right. And I hear these sticks breaking. She's, she's coming towards me. Yeah. And I go, don't, don't come any closer, please love. And she starts crying. She's like, <laughs> I'm like, oh my god, what, what, what? <laughs> I'm upset. What's going on here? She was, she goes, 
I knew it was you. Okay. You what, love? <laughs> Mass- <coughs> big Coronation Street fan, aren't you? <laughs> so she, goes, no, she, goes, she couldn't even see my face, right? She goes, um, she goes, uh, and, and I knew it was you. It's you who's been burning the forest down with your fires. <laughs> I go, no, no, love. No, I'm, I'm just here for tonight. She goes, oh. She says, I come to these woods every night and I always know there's someone here watching me. It's you, isn't it? I said, no, 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 it's not me. So, so I said, I said come, come a bit. Did she quiet. develop a northern accent as well? <laughs> she did, she did. She was in the green northern. She starts yeah. crying. She's like, do you need anything? I'm going, no, no, I'm, I'm oh, all, just oh. to be left alone, please, in the middle of the woods on my own. <laughs> and God. so she, she, she goes um, and she, and she head, heads back to the car. And um, and she shouts, she she shouts, she says, three Marfield Road. And I go, oh, th- thank you. She was like, that's my address if you want to come and find me, if you get cold or anything. Aww. I said, oh, uh, thank you. She was like, I want to make a home for all the little boys and girls that have got nowhere to go. Aww. They can come and stay with me. I said, oh, th- thank you very much. <laughs> She's like, I'll come check on you later. I said, no, no, I'm okay. Please don't so, do that. So you didn't get much <laughs> sleep. <laughs> Staying up there with my, I was shivering with my knife. Oh, yeah. Anyway, so I wake up the next morning and pretty groggy for my test and uh, and I had a book with me, this this book I, I try and sort of live a lot of morals by, which is called I May Be Wrong and um and I, I, I sort of I felt the need, I, you know, I was packing up the tent and I was packing up the tarp and and I was gonna jump back on the bike and I thought something was telling me to read this book. Uh, to just pull up a chapter of it. So I just flicked through the book randomly and opened this chapter called Good Luck, Bad Luck. Mm. And it was a, a story by, um, about this ch- old Chinese, um, or this old Chinese farmer. And he, he lived next to this, this other farmer, right? And he, and he gets up one day and, and he goes out and all of his horse, his horse, his, you mm. know, his main workhorse, the only workhorse he had has is, is, is fled and left the farm. Mm. And he's like, oh, he's, Oh well, and and the other farmer next door he pokes his head over the stone wall. This nosy farmer looking, what's going on? He goes, well, whoa. see your horse has run away. Well, it's bad luck that you won't you you know you won't get anything done. He goes, we'll see. You know, good luck, bad luck. Mm-hmm. And the other farmer, he's very disgruntled, sort of scurries off back <laughs> in his farm. <laughs> goes back to his horses. Anyway, day later. His horse comes back, comes running back into his farm with a pack yeah. of wild horses. Now he's got six horses. Right. And the other farmer's like, whoa, look, yeah. your horse has come back with five other horses. You know, that's... He that, was that, northern that, as well. He was northern <laughs> as well in China. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I got pet. I got pet. <laughs> it, was the, it was the husband of the woman who came yeah. and visited me. Um, <laughs> so he comes back, he's like, oh, it's good luck that, isn't it, that that horse has run off and come yeah. back with, with ten wild horses. <laughs> The other farmer, he looks down, he goes, you know, we'll see. Good luck, bad luck. And the farmer's just giving you a compliment, you know, and he walks yeah. off very disgruntled. And the, and the other farmer, he goes, uh, you know, wakes up one morning and his son, the farmer's son, who's, who's his only worker, he's his good worker, his son, is riding one of the wild horses, gets flown off this horse, this, this, this wild stallion, and breaks his leg. Mm. The other farmer looks over and oh, you know, he's your only worker, he's broken his leg, oh, it's, you know, it's bad luck that. And he goes, well, we'll see, good luck, bad luck. Anyway, the next day, these, the, the military are drafting people in for the army, knock on the door and, and they go, so we need to take your son off to war. Mm. And he goes, he can't go, he's, he's broken his leg. And so he's left with him, he's, he's able to sort of stay home with his family. And, mm. and the, whereas this other farmer's son has to get taken yeah, off. Yeah, yeah. And, you know, so this farmer comes yeah. out and he goes, you, so you've got to keep your kind of son. And he, and he says, yeah, good luck, bad luck. And, and I think the moral of that story was, I don't know why I needed it. And then I got on the bike and I rode over to here. You know, I was all prepped. I had this great feeling about the test. And then yeah. I remember getting here and I just had that horrible night's sleep all, all yeah, for this test. Yeah. So I was like, I'm going to do it. Yeah. And then, you know, I get there and you turned around and were like, yeah, not today, mate. Mm. And, I, and I knew I needed to read that story because yeah. my overwhelming feeling of disappointment yeah, yeah, was yeah. tranquilized by this feeling of, ah, yeah. good luck, bad luck. There was meant to be a hellacious crosswind yeah, on, on the Darwin yeah. landing. So I, so I packed up about more than happy to get back yeah, on my bike and go home and come and back think, a week later. I think that's a really important point, that, because you prepare yourself mentally to do it. But like you said, 
you probably weren't in the even if the weather hadn't have been an issue you hadn't had the right sleep and all the rest of it and it was probably a, a godsend it was meant know? to be yeah. always good luck but everything for a reason and then yeah. yeah i ended up coming back for my actual test you know it felt really good it meant yeah. that um you know i'd had the time at home uh, sort of the day before to to plan out yeah. the route and the, you know and i felt really really good and i came down the yeah. next day and you know the following week and um, and yeah, and the test it went really yeah, well. No, I felt do you really know what's funny though? I didn't actually know about this story about the woods right until today. <laughs> so <laughs> had I known about the woods, I'd have probably said, "Sam, you slept in the woods last night, son. Go home, <laughs> go and have a shower." <laughs> you know, the examiner won't even be able to smell oh, past your skills. <laughs> Oh, so that was brilliant. yeah no and then it went it went really well I, I and I remember coming off the skills test and be and and saying to Steve I said you know what he said how did it go and and I said you know what? I don't mind if I pass or fail I was really happy with my performance there yeah, because yeah. I did I felt I did the best of my ability and if it yeah. wasn't enough to get qualified then I'm I'm more than happy to yeah. do another session training but you wasted it, it man we you know we got there absolutely <laughs> so what's next for Sam on the flying front then. Man, I mean, my dream is to take my brother, my brother Max. Yeah. I think yeah, he's yeah. he's a little adrenaline junkie, yeah. man. He's uh, we are definitely going to take Max. Yeah, him. we'll we'll he's, have him up there. He's you know he's he's got CP and and I think it's never held him back. You know, I've had him on the back of the motorbike and he does more adrenaline stuff than yeah. I do. If, if so, to have him up in the plane with me, it'd be, he's come and watched it here as well, which is lovely. He's come really down was, and watched the yeah. training. That was something that was really yeah. beautiful about the training here is the family aspect and having yeah. you know the family come down and watch you fly. I think it was. Yeah. Yeah, a really beautiful social aspect to it, which yeah. is something that sometimes gets overlooked. Yeah. Um, so that, and then integrating it, like I said, uh, opening new horizons and new yeah. doors of, of adventure and saying, well, you know, now it, suddenly, it, like you say, it only takes yeah. an hour to yeah. jump over to Wales and the beauty of even just going off for half an hour and seeing yeah. the world from a different perspective. There's something so mindful and yeah. isolated about being up there. You don't have your phone on, you know. You, yeah. You, you, you're in the zone there. It, re- yeah. it really does take you away from the business even like, of life. You know, like uh, me and Billy went to Wales. That was a great day because you go early, right? Mm. She went swimming in the sea for about an hour. God. She just buggered off in the sea. <laughs> That's amazing. <laughs> it's just like, because on the day it was so hot, it was ridiculously hot. It looked, the, the water, it looked like you were in the Caribbean when you fell wow. over. It's amazing, it really was. So you can have some really good fun just flying around the UK, let alone go to another place. It's, Absolutely. Uh, so yeah, let's get some trips planned and we hope to get you back on the, on the Aviator show as well, don't we? You go and do some trips. A hundred percent. Yeah, good I'll crack. be there. Well, Sam, thank you ever so much for giving us your time and uh, well done for, for getting through the course because it, it was an incredible journey. So got through the much. course, got through the podcast. Oh, got through the podcast. <laughs> it was harder than the train. <laughs> <laughs> it's grilling him. Uh, okay, no, thanks, Sam. It's a pleasure having you on. Yes, pleasure. Cheers, thank man. you very much. If you like this episode, please like, subscribe and ding the bell to receive notifications of the next episode.